Shrouded in mysticism and legend, these ancient relics were created for purposes beyond our wildest expectations. Here are the top 15 mystical ancient relics of the past. Number 15. The Saqqara Bird While most historians agree that Wilbur and Orville Wright were the first people to fly a plane when they did so just south of Kitty Hawk, South Carolina in 1903, the Saqqara Bird is proof that such a flight may have happened over 2,000 years beforehand. Discovered in 1898 in a burial tomb in Egypt, the Saqqara bird, which is made of sycamore wood, is just a few inches long, and is believed to have been made in about 200 BC. Now, most people believe that the Saqqara bird is simply a model of the Horus, who is a god of ancient Egyptian mythology who has the body of a falcon, yet many others believe that it's instead a model of an ancient plane, as it has features such as a stabilizing tail, wings, and landing gears. However, until archaeologists physically find a plane buried underneath the Egyptian sands, we will likely never know for sure. Number 14. The Dendera Light Yet another mysterious relic hailing from ancient Egypt is the Dendera Light, a motif carved into the stone at the Hathor Temple in Dendera, Egypt. The Dendera Light seems to depict an ancient lighting system that went throughout the tomb that appears to have used electricity. Now, while this may seem highly unlikely, it would certainly explain the lack of lamp black deposits in the cave, which should have been present had conventional torches been used. Yet despite this evidence, the hypothesis has been rejected by many mainstream historians, who instead believe that the designs on the wall were not depictions of electricity, but instead modeled after symbolic images from Egyptian mythology. Regardless, the existence of this electrical system will likely remain a mystery for the foreseeable future. Number 13. The Nazca Lines Located on the Peruvian coastal plain about 400 kilometers south of Lima, Peru, the Nazca Lines are a mystery to both historians and conspiracy theorists alike. Made about 2,000 years ago, they are large, elaborate etchings into the rock below that can only be seen in their entirety by air. As a result, there has been wild speculation as to what their purpose was, with many pointing to them as having some sort of astronomical or religious significance. However, to this day, nobody is 100% sure what they were really used for. Number 12. The Underwater Cairn Under the Sea of Galilee sits a rock pile that, to the untrained eye, may not seem like much. However, it turns out that this is in fact a man-made pile of stones that is 70 meters in diameter, 10 meters high, and weighs in at a total of 60,000 tons. Likely being about 4,000 years old, no one knows exactly what the cairn was used for. However, many historians believe that the cairn was perhaps a burial site above water, and that over time the area was flooded by the sea, hence its current status as an underwater monument. Yet with some conspiracy theorists disregarding these findings and instead claiming that it was built by aliens, perhaps the reality is that this underwater cairn has extraterrestrial origins. Number 11. A Cockno Stone being found by chance in the Scottish countryside in 1887, it goes without saying that the Cockno Stone, which was found near the Cockno Farm, is certainly a curiosity. Measuring in at 13 by 8 meters, the Cockno Stone is believed to be about 5,000 years old, and it has more than 90 carved inscriptions written into it. Being considered to be the finest example of Bronze Age cup and ring carvings in all of Europe, the actual meaning of the inscriptions is still unknown, with many believing that it has something to do with either astronomical records or descriptive art. Regardless, with time, we're sure that this mystery will eventually be solved. Number 10. The Wojniak Manuscript Acquired under mysterious circumstances by Polish antique bookseller Wilfred Wojniak in 1912, the Wojniak Manuscript is easily one of the most mysterious texts known to man. Having been carbon dated to the early 15th century, the book was written in Central Europe using an elaborate yet unknown alphabet, along with several pictures and diagrams that denote everything from female nude portraits to zodiac signs. Unsurprisingly, ever since, both expert and amateur cryptographers have tried to crack the manuscript's code, with countless hypotheses being made over the years as to what the text truly is. And while it really could be anything from complex scientific journal to a complete hoax, if you'd like to try deciphering it for yourself, it can be accessed today at Yale University's Benica Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Number 9. The Tecasi Calixtlahuaca Head While most historians believe that the Spanish were the first to colonize Mexico, the Tecasi Calixtlahuaca Head suggests that this may not have been the case. 
first found by archaeologists in an Aztec burial site about 65 kilometers west of Mexico City, this head, which is made of terracotta, seems pretty mundane at first. However, what makes this relic incredible is that countless experts have confirmed that it was not made in Mexico, but instead in ancient Rome, likely having been crafted around 200 AD. As a result, a lot of speculation has occurred as to how the head arrived in the New World, with many believing that perhaps a Roman ship had sailed to Mexico and made contact with the Aztecs. However, with a number of other hypotheses claiming that it either floated to Mexico via a shipwreck or that it was placed there as a prank by archaeologists working in the ruins, we will likely never really know how it got there. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica Known locally as La Bolas, the mysterious stone spheres of Costa Rica date back to 600 AD, made by the indigenous Diqui people. Very little is known about them today, as the Diqui were wiped out when the Spanish colonized the area a few hundred years ago. Now, the stones themselves are fascinating due to them being made by hammering basalt, limestone, and sandstone stones together and sanding them out into the shape of a sphere. With their size ranging from just a few centimeters long to as much as 2 meters in diameter and 15 tons in mass. However, historians really aren't sure as to what the stones were used for, with most guessing that they were either used as landscape decorations on the property of a chieftain's house, markers to point the way to significant places, or even tools to help with astronomy. Regardless, their true use will likely remain a mystery for the foreseeable future. Number 7. The Holy Jar While most jars today are made to store sauces and jams, this holy jar stands out due to its complete inability to hold much of anything. Known as the Holy Jar, it was most likely retrieved from ancient Roman temple in Britain and dates back to anywhere from 43 to 410 AD. Found after being lost for a few decades in an unrecognizable heap of 180 pieces in a storage room at the Museum of Ontario Archaeology in Canada, once put together it baffled researchers, as no similar Roman-era jar could be found in order to compare it to. As a result, although some have speculated that it could have been used to store dormies, which were a popular ancient Roman snack, or snakes, which were of great religious significance, the truth of the matter is that we may never really know what it was used for. Number 6. The Baghdad Battery Although Italian inventor Alessandro Volta was created with making the first real battery in the year 1800, it turns out that the Persian Empire may have beat him to it over a thousand years earlier. That's because in 1938, German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig unearthed a 5-inch clay pot that contained a copper cylinder encasing an iron rod. Being thought to be as much as 2,000 years old, Koenig thought that the contraption was used as a battery because if filled with a weak acid like vinegar, which would have been available at the time, it could theoretically produce about one volt of energy. However, there are also many skeptics that have claimed that the battery could never work, as it was set up in such a way that attaching a wire to it and running a current would be impossible. Instead, said skeptics believe that it was likely used as a storage vessel for sacred scrolls, as the shape of the battery is similar to scroll containers from the time period. Yet until we find more evidence to help support either claim, we'll never know for sure. Number 5. The Rosetta Stone Although many of the artifacts on this list have some sort of historical significance, few can rival that of the Rosetta Stone. Likely made in the year 203 BCE, it is a royal decree that was made to announce the one-year anniversary of King Ptolemy of Egypt. Now, at face value, the stone really isn't all that unique. After all, due to it being essentially an ancient Egyptian version of a public service announcement, multiple copies were made of it across the empire, as renditions of it were present at all major temples. However, what makes the Rosetta Stone special is the fact that it inscribed the decree not just in Egyptian hieroglyphics, which would have befit the writing of a priest, but also Demotic, which was the language of ordinary Egyptian people and Ancient Greek, which was the language of the Greek administration of Egypt at the time. This was a big deal, because until its discovery, no one had been able to decipher ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. However, due to scholars still being able to understand Ancient Greek and Demotic being somewhat related to the modern-day Coptic language, lead scholars such as Jean-Francois Champollion and Thomas Young were able to decipher it. As a result, the Rosetta Stone has since become a critical tool in helping to decipher hieroglyphics across all ancient Egyptian texts. 
However, what makes the Rosetta Stone even more interesting is the fact that it was found by Napoleon's army. Although the accounts of this event are hazy, it was reportedly discovered on July 15th of 1799, while French soldiers were digging foundations for a fort, and it had apparently been built into a very old wall. However, once the French were forced out of Egypt two years later, the Rosetta Stone came into the hands of the English, and to this day, it sits on a display at the British Museum in London. Number four, the Antikythera Mechanism. When you hear the word computer, a MacBook, Alienware, or Dell laptop is probably what comes to mind. However, historians were thrown for a loop when in 1901, they found what seemed to be the world's first computer. Known as the Antikythera Mechanism, it was retrieved from an ancient Greek shipwreck and thus wasn't exactly in the best condition. However, what archaeologists immediately noticed was that the mechanism not only dated to about 100 to 200 BC, but also that it had a complex system of gears and dials that displayed technology that, until then, had only been seen in mechanisms dating from the 16th century or later. As a result, this piece seems to have been over 1,500 years ahead of its time, leading historians to quickly get to work to determine what it was used for. And although many thought it was either a toy model of the planets or an early astrolab, the 1959 Princeton scientist historian Derek J. DeSola Price intensively researched the artifact so as to put the debate to rest. Once his studies were complete, he affirmed that the Antikythera mechanism was used to predict the position of the planets and stars in the sky, depending on the calendar month. In order to operate the device, a user would simply turn the dial to the current day of the year and the mechanism's gear would approximate where the celestial objects would be on that date. Working almost like an astronomical clock, such a mechanism would be useful in ship navigation, as it would be able to do the work of several astronomers in a fraction of the time. As a result, the device was insanely high-tech, given its age. Number 3. The Shroud of Turin When it comes to this mysterious relic, many believe that its creation is nothing short of a miracle. That's because despite scientists having researched it extensively, it seems that the shroud may have come from divine origins. Now, the story goes that the shroud was the cloth used to cover Jesus' body when he was buried in about 30 AD. From there, it was supposedly transported from Jesus' home region of Judea to Edessa, Turkey, where after changing hands several more times, it eventually found its way to Leary, France in 1353, at which time the Catholic Church officially documented it. Unsurprisingly, there has been a lot of debate and countless scientific studies conducted to determine whether or not the Shroud of Turin is real. Proponents of the Shroud have argued that the relic, which has a very visible outline of the body of Jesus, not only perfectly matches the body of Jesus as described in the Bible, but also could not have been made using a dye, a flame, or paint. This is because the outline is very shallow, only going as deep as one or two fibers in a cloth that contains 200 fibers per thread. As a result, many scientists have determined that the image could only have been made via radiation from a crucified body underneath. However, naysayers have claimed that the Shroud of Turin cannot be authentic due to the cloth not dating from the time period. That's because radiocarbon dating has placed the date of the cloth that makes up the Shroud to somewhere between 1260 and 1390 AD. What's more, there are also some inconsistencies with the blood stains on the cloth, as some of them would likely have occurred not simultaneously, but at rather different times. As a result, the true authenticity of the Shroud will likely be hotly debated for years to come. Number 2. The Dead Sea Scrolls Like most things, paper and parchment tends to rot away over the years, but the Dead Sea Scrolls seem to have withstood the test of time. Likely written by Jewish priests known as the Ascends between the years 135 BC and 73 AD, their subject matter falls into three main categories. The first category, which consists of about 40% of the scrolls, are simply copies of texts from Hebrew scriptures. The second category, which consists of about 30% of the scrolls, are Jewish scriptures that were not canonized in the Hebrew Bible, which comprises the remaining 30%, consist of the varied rules and beliefs of specific sects within Judaism. Now, the scrolls themselves remained hidden in the Israeli desert for years, only eventually being discovered by accident in late 1946 and early 1947 by Bedouin shepherds in the area. From there, scrolls continue to be discovered in nearby locations, leading to heavy archaeological interest in the 800 to 900 specimens that were eventually recovered. Having been stored in a series of 12 caverns known as the Einfeshka Caves, the cool temperature inside of them allowed the scrolls to remain well-preserved, despite their age. And being that they were written in Hebrew, they were able to be read by modern scholars. And while some of the scrolls were certainly in better shape than others, one scroll in particular 
known as the Temple Scroll, is especially high regarded. The 8 meter by 15 centimeter parchments meticulously detail how the Essene priests wanted to destroy what they viewed as a corrupt Jerusalem and then build a new and pure temple in place of the old one. And while we don't think this will occur anytime soon, it goes without saying that these mysterious scrolls have given us some valuable historical insights. Number 1. The Piri Race Map while most historians will tell you that Antarctica was first discovered in 1840, the Piri race map tells a different tale. Created in 1513 by Ottoman general and cartographer Piri Race, about a third of the gazelle skin parchment map survives today, and it was made both using Christopher Columbus's now lost map of the New World, along with an assortment of eight Greek maps, an Arabic map of India, and four Portuguese maps from modern-day Pakistan. Now, the Piri race map is notable for depicting the South American and African coasts quite accurately. However, what sets this map apart is that it also depicts Antarctica, which is strange due to most historians agreeing that it was not found by explorers until the year 1840. Yet despite this incredible inclusion, it must be noted that there are some major inconsistencies with the depiction. One of the most glaring is that Antarctica is shown as a large extension of South America, with no water bodies separating the two. There is also the fact that Antarctica is shown hundreds of kilometers north of its real location, causing many scholars to doubt if it was really seen at all. As a final nail in the coffin, the notes on the Piri race map denote Antarctica as having a warm climate, which is an error that even during the summer would have been impossible to make. Therefore, due to this collection of errors, there are severe doubts as to whether it was really sighted or not. Regardless, with there definitely still being a chance of this being the case, perhaps we'll never know for sure. That's all we have for you today, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Let us know in the comments down below which relic you thought was the most fascinating. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button so that you never miss out on any of our latest videos.